Welcome to the No Excuses Show. I am Eva Eckert and I am your host. This is a powerful motivational message on how to have the no excuses mindset. Are you looking to create better discipline, energy and confidence in your life so you can stop making excuses and take massive action in your life so you can become happier, healthier and more congruent with your mission? If yes, this show is for you. For those of you who are a badass already and those of you who want to become a badass and learn how to apply the no excuses mindset in the main areas of your life, like mind, body, business, and also your relationships. In this show, I share real life situations, experiences, ideas, and how the no excuses mindset helps me and my Greek family to achieve success. By having me as your accountability coach, you will be able to finally discover the power of self-belief and self-discipline so you can stop making excuses and create the life you truly desire by being the best version of you. Will you take the necessary steps to implement what you are learning here so you can get to the next stage of your life? It's totally up to you and you only and no one else. But I encourage you today to take ownership and strive to live your life to the fullest with the no excuses mindset. Hello, hello everyone. Episode 51, No Excuses Show. I have a special guest today with me. Susie is from nothing but goodness here today. So if you, this is your first time today, plug it in. Stay with us, join us, because No Excuses Show is for all the ladies out there, those of you who, who are a badass and those of you who want to become a badass in real life. So we're going to be discussing the No Excuses lifestyle and mindset and, and a lot of different other things. So join us here today. You should have seen what we were doing before this, um, this whole contraption here, because we have different setup here, right? We have different, different screens. I was crawling on the floor to not just uh, disturb the whole setup here, guys. So this is how it works behind the scene. We were just saying that we should probably record this, right? I'm, I'm not, not I'm not sure where I should look because there's so many different contraptions. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, where do, where do I look? We are everywhere here. But guys, yes, yeah, so super excited yeah. uh, for Susie to come on the show because we... You know, as you know, the No Excuses is a, is a live show that I go every Wednesday and we discuss the No Excuses lifestyle. But today, the main, main our topic is to really how to overcome the, the fearful mindset, how to overcome the obstacle that you have in life and just keep on going because life ha is happening and we wanted to live with the congruent mission. And I think... She's got this one, and uh, so let's let's just talk about it. So, Susie, welcome again to the show. This is awesome. Thank you, thank you. I feel so honored. Like I, I always tell Eva that she's like, she is a gift in my life, and I think that the ability that she has to share her vision and cast vision and create this platform so that people can come and share their stories is so incredible. And so I hope that I can add to your thank channel you. and to your viewers. And I'm really, really excited and grateful to be here. Well, awesome. So I see, thank you guys for watching. I see we have a bunch of people joining in and, and staying with us here live. So we, we, we pretty much gonna start with, um, with what is, what is really nothing but goodness? Cause I wanted the viewers to know what, what is it? So, um, nothing but goodness is the business that I ventured off into about three going on four years now. And it was a nut butter business that I created with two lines. There's specialty nut butter that is the not so healthy, but really, really delicious kind. And the primary focus has been around um, the uh, protein infused nut butters, um, because I guess my idea behind all of this is that we only get one life. We only get one body. We only get one mind. And um, I ask, how are we best nourishing it? You know, okay. so for me, it was like, how do I, even if it's something as simple as nut butter, like peanut butter or almond butter, it's something that I absolutely enjoy. I love it. Like peanuts, spreads, trail mix, 
whatever it is. And I thought, I'm not unique in that sense. There are other people that really um, enjoy that, especially the health community, that will eat like a rice cake with nut butter before yes. a workout, right? That and is so, so common. So common yeah. in the fitness world. Hi, right. everybody. Right. Yeah, we're discussing the nut business right now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I love nuts myself. Right. So I thought, like, how can I bring more protein to someone's diet, mm -hmm. right, but with legendary taste? You know, okay. Where someone can really experience it. Like when you start eating in a mindful way, like you just get a different experience. You get different flavors and you know that you're doing your body a good service. Yes. So, so yes, you will be checking her out on the nothing but goodness. We're going to tag her in this post and you can see how she makes the peanut, peanut butter, how, how delicious it is. But it's not just peanut butter. We're talking about protein peanut butter and it's precisely done. So before we move on, can you... Can you tell us a little bit because you 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 mentioned that you picked the right the right nuts right mm -hmm. this is uh, this is not just regular nuts that you're gonna get it from the store right I mean it's uh, I think that one of my um, mantras is like I'm a woman of excellence and everything that I do I do with excellence right so I had to find like the best peanut and I went through many um, to create like the specific texture the flavor combination. Um, the consistency, like the granularity, and so I'm obviously not going to share that, right? Yes, yes, yes. We're not going to say exactly what nut it is, yeah. but uh, that's good. I love that point that she made. That this is she spent a lot of time, and that's what I want to mention to you. When I when I met you, and we've known each other for like three years almost, and we met in a park on one of these get-togethers after school with moms and the kids, and we had a picnic. And she brought the peanut butter, and it was beautifully displayed on the table. I brought my protein pancakes, and then I tried the peanut butter, and I'm like, this is amazing. What an amazing business she's running. The, the product display, the containers, the package. I'm like, where is your shop? Where is your shop? Where can we get that? Yeah. So how, and in the, but the, the, here comes the point. That her presentation was so awesome. Like she says, women of excellence, and she did she did an excellent job. And but wh where you were running this from, really? So it was um, initially a home based business that I was operating, building from home. And what I would do is I'd go out and um, sell my product at um, farmers markets, and so various farmers markets here in Southern California, like the Inland Empire and things of that sort. And then I started um, selling at local gyms mm -hmm. um, in the fitness community. We love nut butter, right? Yeah. So um, there was like an affinity to my product with the athletes, and it was really, really awesome to see it expand. I mean, I'm renovating the business now um, due to the pandemic, and just I just don't think I was ready. Like I wasn't in the space to kind of grow to a bigger capacity um, because I needed to grow myself. Um, I dissolved the business and it's basically being restructured. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we did with, yeah. with Peak and we're going to get to this. But wh why I want to ask this question, Susie, is because so many of you that have that dream, we all have dreams, we all have mm -hmm. passions, but you do not follow your passions from one simple reason. A lot of time is fear or you think that you not you compare yourself to others that already achieved success and you're not doing anything about your vision, your mission, your idea because you're not there yet. And the fact that you're not there yet doesn't mean that you will never get there, right? Mm -hmm. You are here right now for this moment and if you have a passion about this, if you have a congruency with your mission, if you love what you're doing, you love it with full like mm -hmm. love you will eventually make it, mm -hmm. right? But you need to be consistent. And you can start at home, and that's the whole idea, at home business. So we, we're doing this show for all of you to think about it, that if you're sitting on something, on some idea that you really wanted to approach, mm -hmm. don't wait for the perfect conditions because there is no perfection. No, is we, we, we don't have perfect... Uh, perfect relationships we don't have perfect lives and just because you see something on social media can be misleading mm -hmm. people have money people people have fortunes but you don't know what's really the true colors behind it we don't know people have stories people people have struggles so just l look at this from a, a little bit different point of view that you can start anytime don't wait for the perfect conditions and I and and it always really fascinates me when um, when I meet people and people have 
uh, start different businesses, right? Like with you, why was exactly, what made you to create that zone of genius? That the knot is, like you need to follow the knot. Like mm -hmm. why, why, why peanut butter? I mean, it's kind of like a twofold question. I think like when I think of the zone of genius, I think like what is genius if not like the culmination of, and the process of time, energy, focus, and daily improvement kind of coming together. <clears throat> and so things evolve over time. You know, when I first started the business, this idea came from, from two people, um, and they're both my sisters. My sister Olivia once created a nut butter out of honey roasted peanuts, and it, it planted a seed, right? Where I was okay. like, okay, I can make my peanut butter. And I started creating it for um, my neighbors and for my peers at work okay. as a Christmas present. So instead of baking cookies, I was like, well, I can make peanut butter for them. Okay, and that was already made with the no, protein? I just, no, 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 no. Okay. It was, it, it, it's like, it's, it started there. Okay, and so, then, so, so initially, it yeah. was like no protein. No. It was just the peanut butter. It wasn't even a business idea. It was mm -hmm. just like, how can I make a gift for someone? Mm -hmm. And so I think that speaks to that sometimes you have an idea, the idea might be good, but that not that that idea might not be it. That might yeah. not be the winner. There is like an evolution, and if you can give yourself time to think and focus, then you'll find that idea, right? It it will stem. And so it's it's exactly what happened in my case is that um, I started creating this for as a gift, and then I started thinking, well, how can I target like the health and fitness world. So they, not only the purpose, but your, your, your focus, the fact that you were so concentrated on it, it started giving you more ideas of the actual subject. Yeah, it was. I didn't think about it from a business standpoint until <clears throat> my eldest sister, Claudia, she, she, she planted the business idea. She's always been in the business world. I have a science background. I was a, a police officer and I had been retired and I was just like not in a really good space in my life. And my sister's like, well, why don't you just create a business? You have a really great product mm -hmm. and sell it at a, at a farmer's market. And I thought, that's a stupid idea. Like, mm -hmm. I know nothing about business. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought like, why not? It's, it all comes down to belief. Like if you believe in yourself and in your idea, then, and if you can cast vision, then other people will buy into that as well. Absolutely. You know, if you don't believe in yourself, then forget about it because you're not going to convince anyone to believe in you. Yes, absolutely. You need to believe in your own company and your own mission. Otherwise, you will not be able to sell it. And it totally goes with with even the peak when we were when we had the two fitness centers. Is exactly what you're saying. And when you said that your sister that planted the idea, I think a lot of times in our, our life there is something or someone appears in our life yeah, that absolutely. will plant that seed at some point because. For me, the first seed planted was when my grandfather was working out when I was, when I was still living with them. I was probably six and seven years old, and I remember this, and I mentioned this in some of my videos too. He would close the door into his room, and he would work out in his room behind the closed door. In between his rounds, he would go to the kitchen, and make his breakfast but it was so organized that in a first break he would go and cook the meal then come back then in a second break he would go and cut the bread and each time I would go to the kitchen I would see more things piling on his plate okay. and there were the colors of because Polish people eat a little bit different than here in America there was cottage cheese there was peppers there was onions there was so much greens on the plate and he would complete the whole workout while making his breakfast That's and awesome. it was just fascinating for me <laughs> how this man is doing it but me seeing him exercising it was something on subconscious level mm -hmm. planted already there i did not know this but then again something like this appeared when i was in my high school i was just going to work out for my like local club i was doing fitness since i was very young and then my teacher told me, you are so good with uh, um, being athletic, which I never thought. I'm like, we're far away from athletics. But right. for some reason, I had some good, uh, 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 I guess, good grades. And she said, why don't you just apply for a university of physical education? And the, this, the, the, she planted that seed mm -hmm. in my head so deeply because right. I couldn't get myself 
anywhere else. I couldn't go into business school because I was not a business girl. I, I liked the motion, the movements, and the music. Mm -hmm. And that's how it all started. But mm -hmm. that's what you said. It goes for stages because I went to my university and I did not know then that I will be a coach, that I will be coaching sessions because I wanted to do a massage, but then they removed our sessions from actually become a massage on this, on this, uh, during the five years of university and through all these different things and people that showed up in my life. And I create, I finally discovered that this is what I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, so, the saying goes, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Yeah. And I think that if you start, um, if you put yourself out there and you open I your love mind. That quote. Yeah, it's it's so true. When you start changing your mindset, you you start doing work on yourself. You start seeing things through a very different lens. And so opportunities that you may have not been able to identify as an opportunity back then, mm -hmm. you start seeing now. And so really, there's just. I mean, opportunities are limitless. You yeah, know? that's what always fascinated me with her. When we first started talking, she was just so amazing. And I could talk with her forever. I'm like, she's like the endless book of uh, <laughs> personal development. I absolutely love it. I can just keep on asking her a question. We had the best conversations ever. Absolutely love this. So, uh, so, so obviously running a business, we have the ups, we have the downs, like, Anything in life, mm -hmm. what has been the biggest struggle for you? Myself, 100%. I think that um, my personal story was shitty. I was replaying um, this, I, I had this mindset, and I know this sounds bold to say, but when I was able to identify with it, it was like freedom. And it was, there was so many things that had happened to me um, you know, I went through a divorce. I was fighting a child custody battle. It was like, I felt so broken. I, I got retired from law enforcement. I tried to pursue the, the medical field, which had always been my, my vision for myself and nothing was working. And I literally saw myself, like I was in this ocean just constantly, like I'm just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And so my dreams had vanished. My vision had gone away. I felt like I was just living for the moment to just fight for my child. And, um, I was replaying this story of like victimhood it was like yeah. i'm a victim and it's a sad story and well yeah those things that happened were not fun um rescripting my story Helped was you. the game changer mm -hmm. because it was that and then the second part to that was um recognizing that the greatest investment that anyone can make is in themselves and so, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Robin Sharma. I love him. Love him. I am obsessed with him. The 5 a.m. club is his newest thing, I think, right? Yeah. And he is absolutely fantastic. He's he, he is, uh, the way how he writes, the way how yes. he speaks, it's just like you living with what he writes. That's how it feels, absolutely. right? If you've never tried Robin Sharma, oh. try him. It is yeah. absolutely amazing writer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things that he teaches is that, you know, I think we focus a lot on mindset and mindset is so fundamentally important, right? Because everything stems from what you're speaking to yourself about, how you're speaking to yourself, the beliefs that you formulate, because that will lead into becoming an attitude that will create an action that will create like a yes, behavior. Because exactly. Remember, like when you get the moment that you get up and you start with the negativity, mm -hmm. this is this. Those are the thoughts that played in your head. If you're not gonna catch on this, if you're not gonna stop this, you are in a big trouble. Right. Big trouble for this day and for the next day forward. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's it's once we realize that that we have that self talk, there's always a talk in our head, and we realize and we catch on all what. Okay, am I saying these things pos in a positive way or negative? Right. Once you catch this, it's a breakthrough. It is. And he teaches that it's not only mindset that we need to build. There's four interior empires and there's heart set, health set, mindset, and soul set. And you need to sew into all of those so that mm -hmm. you can really function as one, you know? That's and so I started investing in me where I started waking up early to give myself time to read and journal and, and meditate and work out. You know, I mean, I can't do extensive workouts because of my injury, but, mm -hmm. but things that were like satisfying my soul. And so essentially I started patching up all of these broken pieces in my heart. Mm -hmm. And from that, like, there's just a bunch of goodness now. And I just want that to overflow. And so I feel that back when I started the goodness, 
I wasn't leading myself. Like, how can I lead a big business, you know, on a commercial scale if I'm not even a leader to myself? And so that was a very big hangup, but investing in myself has been, has been a big game changer. Yeah. And, and that's, I think we catch, like when you grow yourself, you mm -hmm. can grow your business because right. I think if there are situations when the business outgrow the actual leaders, but you will never, you have to keep on educating yourself because again, you're running into trouble. I think mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to succeed. Mm -hmm. That best investment is always in ourselves, as you said. And I think, I guess that's what really motivates you now. It does. I mean, it's that. And I think that a lot of people like motivation for me, that word is very fickle. Mm -hmm. Like for me, motivation is like anger and sadness and happiness. Mm -hmm. It is fickle and it is fleeting. And I think that a lot of people feel that they have to have this innate motivation to wake up every morning and it's going to be like a consistent level of motivation. And that's just not the case. Like, no, totally. Yeah. But w what do you think it is? I think that the, the, the best approach to it is, um, Simon Sinek speaks about like starting with why, why are you doing something? And you just have to keep on asking and answering that question until you get to the root of it. Why do you want to build this business? Well, because of this, why? Because of this. And then it gets to a point where you're just, you have an answer and it's an emotionally driven answer and that's your why. And so for me, it's, it's a uh, multifaceted, you know, for me, it was, um, I'm a single mom mm -hmm. and, um, I felt like there, I was living life for so long, um, based on the decisions that other people were like making for me. And it, it not only is a sense of like, I'm taking control of my life, but I want to show my daughter that like, Hey, I want to be her hero forever. I don't want to be her hero from age one through seven. And then she's going to grow up to like admire other people except me. Like, of course I want her to, you know, look up to other people. But I want her to see the hero in me. Like, I want to see her. I have to lead my family from the front. And so for me, she's my biggest boy. She didn't ask to be born into the situation that she was born in. Mm -hmm. And so now it's my turn to be like, one of my biggest values is to, to be an excellent mom. To be a very present mom. And, and you so, are. I mean, and you are. And I see you. you in action. And you have absolutely, you've been doing an amazing job. Thank you. But she's, she's fundamentally like why I want to build this. Because I want her to see me struggle me get back up, you know, me go through hardships, me build something, me build me. Like and then real world situation, yeah. nothing, nothing fake, because that's what it is. Right. Like this is real world. It's we, not pretty. It's not. And as you said, it's um, motivation. I hear this all the time. Like this is endless. It's always comes down to motivation with everybody. I am not feeling motivated to start the workout. I'm not feeling motivated to do something. But guys, remember, it's like, this is, like there is no one else really that will motivate you. Like think about it. This energy, we are energy. We are energy. So if you eat better, exercise, create the habits that run your life, that's where really the motivation will come from. And that one little thing that you do good, that one victory will set maybe a momentum to the next one. But I have days sometimes that I will, uh, uh, things going out, out, out of control or things piling up or I cannot catch up with my days and all of us do. Mm -hmm. But what I do in moments like this, I am like, okay, what, what are the one or three things that I accomplished today that moved me in some direction? So mm -hmm. I'm like, what I did today, I didn't just go all over the place. I did something and I tried to sit down and write them, but then it comes down to journaling guys again. Yes. And we are big on this because yes. you, the, the self reflection comes from writing it down. I I've opened up my heart and my soul to actually breaking down these patterns and looking at my day. And if I screw up something in my day, I don't think that I would have had these breakthrough if I didn't write that. I agree. Journaling was something that was very challenging for me to get accustomed to doing. And I had so many successful people tell me about journaling and mm -hmm. I was just like, yeah, whatever. I don't have time. Well, I'm doing your um, MF40, you know, challenge, which mm -hmm. is absolutely phenomenal. 
FM40, you guys can check it out. It's uh, it's a 40 days challenge. Every day, different <clears throat> challenge, different habit. It is outstanding. I mean, there were there are you know the fundamentals, and those were things that I was incorporating. But there's new things that are challenging me, and um, journaling was one of them. And and it's been it's been so helpful and so freeing to get like everything out on paper. You know what I mean? Because there's so many times that we have all of these great ideas. And you got to get it written down so that you can revisit it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Not only that, but just like watch, watch yourself grow. Yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I have this. What is, I think I moved it. Yes, I have one. I have actually the second book that it's there, the mm -hmm. blue one. I created this book a few years ago and it says no excuses. And I write the biggest things in my life that I wanted to accomplish. And you know, like if you, if you have a book like this, you should all, I think all of us should have this. And you write those five year goals, those ten years goals. Not necessarily people say a Bob Proctor who actually passed away just recently. Mm -hmm. And he was always saying revisit them or he would carry the, the in his pockets the main goals. I did not know that all his life that he would he was doing. Wow. And he was the really cool. one of the people who wrote the, the secret. And I would revisit them but not all the time. Just recently I looked at them and I'm like, Oh my god, holy smoke. There have been a lot of things that I have accomplished here. Yeah. And I was surprised, but you know why? Because this wasn't just one time thing. It was the main things that I focused myself on. Because if I would have asked you right now to write down the 25 biggest things that you want to accomplish in your life, and you would write down, and then I would say, make this list into five or 10, because the 25 is way too many. Mm -hmm. You're going to be spreading yourself things that are always the main ones that you really want. Right. So I think that's the goal. And writing it and rewriting it, like every day I write, I write my main things that I want to accomplish in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, just recently, like I mentioned to you that we wanted to start the free code line. And we started, but we didn't sell anything. I created the designs. I created some other things online. And then I had a, I had a pause and the pause was, it was inaction. Inaction of a sense like, if you are inactive, if you don't constantly working on something, you're stepping away from your mission, from your dream. Yeah. And I had that moment and then it kind of hit me just the other day. I'm like, I, I, that was something that kind of scared me. I kind of got into a bump and I couldn't jump over that hurdle. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, but this is not the first time that I'm facing some challenge. Right. So I just need to work on the challenge to like right. overcome it. Right. And then the, the answer is on the other side of the spectrum. It's always like this. It's like climbing up the hill. You don't see, you, you don't know what's behind the hill, but you're never going to see it. So you actually not going to, you have to keep on going. Well, most people, I think, and, and it's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think we all kind of do that at some point in our life is that we encounter something challenging in whatever it is that we're focusing on. And then we like hit the wall and we're like, okay, this is it. Mm -hmm. Instead of like persevering and like pressing through because okay. on the other side of that, there's victory. Exactly. It wouldn't be a breakthrough. If you weren't breaking yes, into something. exactly. You know? It's so true. And you know, it's like the challenge. Some people call it the challenge. Some people call, call, work that, call it the hardship. Some people, uh, it can, I think some people will call it fear. Mm -hmm. But it's all connected to one thing, another. It's something hard Absolutely. that we uh, we should be working, but we just choose not to. And that was my thing. And I'm like, wait a second. Wake, wake up. Like, what are you doing? Right. Like, you have a big mission here. And... Uh, uh, it was, oh, okay. It was, I know what it was. Somebody wake me up. It was, it was actually one of my clients. I think she's watching somewhere there. And she was saying, wow, that's super excited about the line. And that's super excited what you actually came out with the awesome idea. And it hit me. And I'm like, how could I just not, like I stopped for a moment, right. you know, and right. this is just fantastic. So the, listen to people, be present and like, take it in what they tell you. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, so um, I see you guys watching still. You are present with us. So maybe you you have some struggle or maybe you have a specific question to ask. You can just post it here. And don't be afraid. I mean, a lot of people watch and never ask questions, but 
look, this is just a regular show. It's like we just like regular people coming on board here and doing these lives and 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 and, and speaking exactly the truth how it is. Mm -hmm. So if you would um, think about it as far as from the point of the nothing but goodness, what's your biggest victory right now? My mindset. <laughs> it has been. It all stems from within. If I wouldn't have started doing work on me, then I wouldn't have um, the patience and the discipline like to continue on. Like I had people like you that were part of my problem and you you called me out on this and I think it's like this is why you need great friends that can challenge you and be completely honest is that you know I was sitting here trying to figure out like because you know I, I that nut butter business is kind of at a stalemate because of the pandemic and I couldn't go back to farmers markets mm -hmm. my vision was to have it commercial like I want this around the world mm -hmm. like I want this on store shelves mm -hmm. and um I was telling you about some other idea that I was having and you looked at me and you were like why like you're sitting on a gold mine and I sat there and was like, that was, that's Susie. That has been Susie's pattern is I start something and I don't finish it and then I move on. And I'm not, I'm not unique in that sense. You know what I mean? But that was a big problem. And so my, like for this year, like my word for the year, my words is you finish it. Everything that you start, you finish it. And so my biggest breakthrough has been being brutally honest with myself and disciplining myself. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I don't always want to wake up at five because I've had a late night, but I told myself that I was going to wake up at five. Because, even though, you even had... though I'm tired, even though whatever, right? Even though you can make any excuse, mm -hmm. any excuse in life. And if you repeat that excuse long enough, that's yours to keep. You own that. You know what I mean? So you have to choose. Like, I think what's helped me is like recognizing that everything in life is a choice. And we're constantly choosing something. So if we're choosing something, we're rejecting something. So I got to a state where I was like, well, I need to choose to be disciplined because that's going to bleed out into different arenas in my life. Mm -hmm. So if I'm choosing discipline that I have to reject having like a squirrel brain, I have to reject not finishing it. Mm -hmm. I have to reject being lazy. I have to reject distraction because we live in a world that is flooded with distraction and you just have to. You have to turn yourself off from the world. Yes. You really do. Otherwise, you're going to be pulled in 16 different directions. That's why 5 a.m. is like the golden hour. It's quiet. There's no noise. You're not getting notifications. You're not checking your emails. I don't even... I hope phone. that you're not. Because if not. you yeah. do, we should talk about yes. these disciplines in the morning <laughs> that no, no to scrolling down Facebook and, no. and watching Instagram. Because I know for myself, like one thing, and I know that you guys have this, you're one think that you look or like someone will lead you to the next. I've never heard anyone that would like something on on the social media that would not go into fifth or sixth or seventh thing. And out of nowhere from Instagram, you ended up on YouTube on some other sales channels that you didn't even want to go. It's, a I, it's, it's like crazy. It pulls you in. It has like a, an octopus with hundred arms. You know, one thing that has helped me is Marie Forleo. She wrote a book. And um, it's amazing. It's called Everything is Figure Outable. And she said um, one thing that stuck out, and it was create before you consume. By the way, look at her brain. I mean, she would have been an amazing doctor. She would have memorized everything, first of all, guys. I mean, like, come on. I probably should. Do you remember all the books that you read? Like, I don't you? know. <laughs> I, mean, I just I became very intentional. Like, one of the things for me was I admired people that can, like, v recite quotes. Like, I always wanted to be that person. And so for a long time, I was like, man, I just, my brain doesn't do that. I can't do that. Oh, but then course, you will not you do will that. Not. Mm -hmm. And so I became very intentional about like, how can I remember this? And it, it happened. started happening. Yes. yes. And so when she said create before you consume, I, I carry that in my heart now because I feel like when I wake up in the morning, I don't want to be a consumer of everything. Facebook and, and content that someone else is creating. Because what happens then? Not only that you're going to be pulled, but then you compare yourself, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And you Absolutely. start thinking, oh, oh my God, this person is already ahead of me. They have so much. And, and you start going into oh, your shell. Are you talking to yourself again in here? What's going on here? <laughs> I always hear all this talking going on. You just talk to yourself. <laughs> you talk to the mirror? <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> and this is a live show. There's always weird shit going on here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how the freak, freak fan.
family works. I, I, th yes, we were waiting for that moment. <laughs> Watch the freak and the show, the freak show, and the Russian and the freak as well, because that's that's the real deal. But uh, there was a destruction right here. We lost our fault. But the point was that you you're gonna compare yourself, and the fear will step on your toes, and it will overpower you, and you're done for the day. Right. Because that's today's life. That's what it is. Right. So you need to have a very thick skin. You need to build an, like an armor. Like you need to tell yourself, but how are you going to do this? By having these disciplines, this disciplines. These routines in the morning, guys, yeah. not being sporadic. Because if you get up without any uh, consciousness, without intention, without planning your day right, you're going to be pulled into so many directions. You will. And even like, I, you know, when you wake up and you... you have a morning routine that you set to, you know, whatever your standard is, um, at, by seven o'clock, you look back and you feel accomplished. And, and what you're doing is you're stacking wins. Yeah. So like for the day, you've already started winning. So if something happens with the kids or there's traffic or there's whatever, you like approach the day in a state of calm, yes. you know, where you're like, okay, cool. I'm okay. Yeah. And it really, really helps you. You guys can totally check out the FM 40. We can, Add the link to this video as yeah, well. It's phenomenal. Uh, and it, it's only 40 days, 40 days of doing the challenge every single day. There are different things. We're not going to be going into details because that's not our show. We're talking about nothing but goodness and showing you that it's possible, that your dreams can become reality, <laughs> that you, you need to work hard on that dream mm -hmm. and that there will be obstacles. <coughs> An obstacle is the way. Ryan Holiday said that, and he wrote the whole book on obstacles. Can you imagine writing a whole book on obstacles? You know, that brings to light two things. I just heard this, I don't know if it was on a podcast or an audiobook. I don't know if I read this. I don't know where I got this, but we talk about passion so much, right? Like, I just want to be passionate about. And when you just take the word, the root, the Latin root of passion is to suffer. Yeah, what did I, yeah, I think I came across something. And I thought, thing. it's so accurate. Like, you have a vision, you're going to suffer, yeah. right? But it's, if it's what's fueling you and you're passionate about you, you're going to be driven. And and on the other end of that, it's, like, beautiful, yeah. you know? Like, like, thinking even about giving birth to a child. Yes. He's so, uh, uh, this is the best thing I think ever can happen to a mom. And actually, those of you who could have children... That's beautiful. I know that some of you might be watching this and you could not have them. But if you actually give birth, it's the same thing. It's it's that struggle throughout the birth. Mm -hmm. It's like usually very, it happens very early. A woman does not have any kind of struggle. Right. If the baby just pops out, there's always some kind of things that are going on. It's the same thing. And then you have the bond and this amazing... I, I always remember when Tyson was born the first time, I could not... The, the feeling of being with him and, and having him in, in my arms. It was something totally, I couldn't compare to any feeling mm -hmm. in the world. And I said, how, and I remember this like today, and I'm like, how am I going to explain this to someone what I feel? And I couldn't yeah. describe this. It was something so empowering. And I'm sure if you, if you have children, you can totally relate to this. But yeah, you see, we, in this show, we kind of, Go and talk and, and mix other things, but I'm sure you're getting some valuable content content today that you 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 will hit the struggles, you you will you will hit the destructions and I know that you hit the destructions with, with your business. I know that you had a moment and I was like she stopped doing this and she has such an amazing talent for this, but sometimes the destructions can be, you know, another shiny object. Mm -hmm. or money sometimes we yeah. just want that quick fix the same like yeah. people nowadays they want something for nothing people want a uh, quick fix people this even with weight loss we want to lose weight now today we don't want to put the work and understand that this is a process when people start their business they want to make immediate immediate money we not 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 steve steve job doesn't happen every single day okay he made his first um i think million dollar within like a year when he started the business i'm right. reading his book it was phenomenal but it, it those things occur sometimes but 
that's how you can't compare yourself to someone. You just have to yeah. stick to the vision, what you have, and, and go for it and put your heart into it. Yeah, comparison is a thief of all joy. That's something yeah. that I teach my kid, but it, it translates to so many different areas of your life. And I think that, especially I, with business, I mean, I didn't know anything about it. You know, when I was, I made so many mistakes, like so many. And uh, ultimately, though, I thought it was really cool because what drove me was that, you know, I created this. Like, I created, and I never saw myself as a creative person, but I created a product that people loved. And people were buying it. That's the thing. And like, people, people were buying, buying it. it. Yeah. You were in these stores. People would order it from you. Yeah. And it was still on a small scale, but if you know someone, you can connect her. You never know. <laughs> Somebody can come into a possession of this video, and uh, you, you want to collaborate with her. Do it, because... Um, this was amazing. I mean, you, you make some truly amazing products. I've never tasted anything better. The, 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 the flavors uh, were phenomenal. And maybe you are the owner of some company with uh, with amazing um, protein and you want to create your own brand here. So yeah, I mean, you know someone. This is all collaboration, guys. You know someone, you meet someone, that's how it works. That's how the world works. And and if I didn't speak to her, if I didn't like say, Susie, what are you doing? Why? Why are you sitting on the gold mine? I don't, I don't know. We don't know what, what, what would this go, right? Right, right. And you know what? Sometimes you really just need people to believe in you when you can't believe in yourself. Until you can believe in yourself. And that's what the coach does. Yeah. Coach does and real, real, uh, obviously real friend does. They will tell you this. Yeah. And you need to hear this. Sometimes you don't want to hear it, but no. you need to hear it. Okay, you need to hear it, you need to be pulled, you need to be like shaken up uh, sometimes. So, uh, have, have any, anyone ever told you, I mean, I don't remember the prices of your peanut butter, and it's not really important right now, but have anyone ever told you it's too expensive yeah, for all that? Absolutely. I had people that were like acquaintances that would tell me, well, why do I need to buy your peanut butter when I can go to Costco and get two big skippy containers for eight, nine, ten, I don't know what it's called. And you know what? You just kind of have to meet people where they are. But I love these questions. You know, yeah. I love them because that brings me, if you ever heard the story about Picasso sitting in a bar. Have you ever heard the story that he was sitting in a bar? When he draws a nap on a napkin? Yes. Yeah. When he was drawing on a napkin, somebody came up to him and he said, yeah. how much are you selling this painting, this creation for? And he goes, $25,000. She goes, wait a second, on a napkin, $25,000? Why so expensive? Because it took me 25 years to create it. Right, yeah. Do you understand the analogy? He created this now, but to create what he actually did, it took him 25 years. Right. That's like when we had our business, our, our, our services were very expensive. I had the top of uh, the knowledge that we put in, the combination of things, the way how the gyms were run, Mm -hmm. They were run with a specific way. Mm -hmm. And that was my knowledge that I put, my education, my time. And that's what we were charging when we were charging. We were not $50 gym. We were $200 gym. Mm -hmm. And it was for a monthly fee because you would get the whole service, everything in it. And, 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 and it's good to have that. It's good to have that people like tell you these things because then you actually <laughs> believe even more through yourself with your product that I am different and better than maybe some other products. Yeah. I'm not Skippy and she should never be the product and you will yeah. never will be because yeah. this is a different kind of product. And you know, one thing that is really important to recognize is that you're not trying to cater to the world. Yes. You're trying to cater to specific people. And those specific people will see the value in your product and they will be willing to pay the extra money because of your meeting their needs. Yes. And so I'm not going to make everyone happy. I'm Absolutely. Not. And remember I'm this, not. you want, and you shouldn't no. be worried about the fact that you should be, because that's a lot of times people think, oh, I have to uh, meet everyone's needs, but it's not like this. Mm -hmm. You will never meet every there will be people that there will be people that come on this show and they say, what are these two girls talking about? Mm -hmm. Uh or they have no that's your opinion. Listen, if you don't like it, just turn it off. <laughs> we gotta be here. <laughs> we gotta be plugging along and talking because that's what we do. Yeah. And if you 
don't like it, it's fine. That's your opinion. And we respect it. And it's totally good. Right. Uh, and, and, and we should have opinions. But don't listen to other people's opinions and take it for too much because then you, you lose yourself. So think for yourself. Like, I'm not saying don't still take to consideration, but truly ask yourself a question. It's like, do, do I really believe what this person is saying or what, 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 what am I believing in, right? What That's, I'm standing for. It's 100% that. And I think, like, once you're rooted in your identity and you know who you are, you know where your roots are stemming from, then you're kind of unshakable. Yeah, you're human and you're going to be subject to the emotions. Like, if Absolutely. somebody hurts your feelings. Yes, it's always. We never, we don't like these Robots. Amazon yeah. uh, women. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we feel it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I cry all the time. You know, I'm a chick. I've got all kinds of hormonal, mm -hmm. like, fluctuations. Hold on, do you cry <laughs> on movies? I, I cry. Oh, not really. There, like, for the past two months, I've literally cried at every movie that I've watched. And most mm -hmm. of those aren't selections that my seven-year-old are making so they're oh, like this is cool it's so i'm not alone because <laughs> i cry and this whole family looks at me and and i actually start saying to them i'm about to cry and they are oh my god this is ridiculous this is a show for little kids and she's gonna be crying i said i'm sorry and i will be like really no. so upset no. and uh, okay so that's yeah. good that's good to know my daughter just the other day she's like he, she looks at me and she goes here we go again with the oh, so she doesn't <laughs> <laughs> you, do. you see, you see, that's the good thing. It's good to know this. It's yeah. good. It, it makes us feel better. I want to feel everything. I mean, too. I just, I want to feel everything. I think, like, something that's so cool about mindfulness and, and meditation is that, like, you learn to feel again, you know, and just be like, you look at life. There's so many things that we take for granted. I love waking up at five specifically to do my morning routine, but I make it, I make an effort every single day to walk out and watch the sunrise. Because it's a friggin' miracle. Like, we get to see the sun rise again. Like, I'm physically alive. I have all the opportunity available for me to move my life forward. And, like, we take these things for granted. There's, like, yes. miracles everywhere. You yes, know? they are. We need to have our eyes open. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. So, at the end, what, if I would ask you, what really gives you energy? Um, I know this sounds... I don't know if it's cliche, but really, um, my morning routine is the reason that I have the energy that I have now because I am investing in me. Like there's so much, like when I start my day, by the time I'm done with my morning routine, I feel like alive. Mm -hmm. I've gotten great knowledge from great authors. Like there is so much value in books. Yes. You get like people that have been invested in a specific arena for like 30 years writing down their thoughts that you can read in one week or one month or whatever, how long it takes you. And it's like, you look at my books and it's like, everything is highlighted. Highlight. <laughs> it's like, when I go back to read them, I think I have to reread re the whole book, but you get all of this information and for free. Like, I mean, yeah, you pay 15 bucks for something, but when that, that now I like, I'm so grateful. I approach every single day from a place of gratitude Attitude is your gratitude. Gratitude is the attitude, whatever the saying is. Gratitude is the attitude. It is. It is. Like when you start waking up, immediately journaling, reciting what you're grateful for, your day is just so beautiful, you know, because you start appreciating everything that you're given. Yeah. You really are. Like we are blessed with so much. And I think sometimes we get caught up in the comparison trap. We and, do. We do. And, and guys, life is more than just this. Oh. And it's like, uh, that stress that we take upon us, it's so quickly to be absorbed nowadays, right? It's like, it's like we are sponges, but, and I always go back to my childhood and I think life was so different. Of course, you, when you're younger, you, you, you look at things different way, but it just seems like the whole world has shifted so much since then. Mm -hmm. And, and <clears throat> I can't just imagine how our kids take it in because I look at my childhood and everything was like with a pause and like a slow motion. There was no screens. Mm -hmm. There was just playing outside in the dirt. And it was just like that freedom of not being occupied by all these devices that we have. It was more interaction with human beings. Well, you were present. Yes. And you know what? And I've realized this also with my family. We have like these routines and we almost done guys and we have everything scheduled and go out time and play time. And, 
and sometimes we don't we don't follow of course but what makes me happy and what i've realized is like when i daily have the interaction when i have that playfulness with my kids when i have uh, when there's no screens actually when they don't look at the screens when we play the games or when we go outside and play ping pong that what drives me because that's how i was brought up we were playing to, uh, um, badminton we were playing these games outside that what that's what was giving me the energy and that's what i realized that i love mm -hmm. and that's the interaction i need to have that interaction with people i feel, the, same way. I feel the exact same way yeah so anyway we we about to do, be done because we could i think we could talk forever mm -hmm. but you see how special she is a absolutely amazing so again I'm going to tag you in this post. I'm going to tag you in this video. You will be able to watch this video on YouTube. There will be a link for her Instagram. You can get in contact with her. You can purchase directly the peanut butter from her. And if you have any other questions for Susie, you can send her a message as well. So thank you so much. That was a pleasure. It was so good. Thank as always, you. it was great. You had a great time. I hope you guys get some valuable information here. And uh, you want to continue with your dreams. And we're going to say goodbye to you and no excuses. Check out the FN40. Ciao, everybody. Have a no excuses day. Bye.